So there's actually a lot to consider when properly lighting your setup or your space, from how large your room is to the color theme of your setup, but putting in the time and effort into lighting your setup properly really does elevate your desk setup to the next level. And I've been using Govee's new AI sync box that just dropped and I think this device could be the single device that you need to get your lighting setup kickstarted really simply for a few reasons. And despite the slight misnomer, this thing is essentially a HDMI lighting sync box that delivers a real time lighting experience, whether you're gaming, watching movies or listening to music. Gobi sent this AI box over to me to test and as always, my opinion is my own. So in this video, I'll unbox it, test it out, see what this AI thing is all about and also compare it to my Philips Hue sync box, which is the main competitor to this AI box. And I've been using this sync box for a while now, so it's gonna be interesting to compare, but hint, hint, I will be retiring my Hue sync box. So inside we get the discrete box itself and thankfully the AI box is bundled with two very sleek light bars and a full RGB IC light strip to get started with. So we don't need to actually go off and buy additional lights because as we know, the cost of smart lighting really snowballs fast. So within the AI box itself, there's three HDMI ports and an eARC HDMI port for your soundbar or speakers. So you could hook up a bunch of devices like your PC, PS5 and Nvidia Shield. And then there's one HDMI out port. The two USB-C inputs are for the included light bars. So this box is aimed at a gaming first setup, hence all of the AI tech here, specifically Govee's Cogni Glow tech, which is Govee's specific AI algorithm that is fed audio and visual info live through HDMI to get all the lights synced up. Apparently the live computation is powered by a pretty powerful processor inside the box. It claims to be equivalent to the A14 chip found back in the iPhone 12, managing over 14 trillion calculations per second. A bit overkill? Yeah, probably. It's also worth mentioning because I know many of you will probably be asking that these are HDMI 2.0 ports, not HDMI 2.1 ports. So unfortunately, what this means is we are capped at 4K 60Hz, 2K 144Hz or 1080p 240Hz. Thankfully, HDR, Dolby Vision and CEC are supported though. So my first impressions when I set this up was just how fast and reactive these lights are. Even from the wallpaper and alt tabbing to other windows, the projection of colors is immediate and faster than anything I've tested. There's almost no synchronization delay, but to be more specific to the millisecond, there is less than a 16 millisecond delay, which in person feels basically instantaneous. This is a lot different to the T2 in visual lights that I use on my TV setup and have been loving. That uses a dual camera system, so there is more of a noticeable delay, whereas this AI box uses the feedback via HDMI and the Cogni Glow tech for that immediate lighting change, which takes immersion to the next level, particularly when you're playing games. I'll speak about who should get the T2 versus this AI box later in the video, but for now, let's have some fun with games and test it out. So currently the AI box only supports a handful of games, Apex, League of Legends, Valorant, and Overwatch 2. When I say supported, what I mean by that is you'll get bespoke lighting effects matched to what's happening in the game. It's actually pretty cool. Govi did say though that there is upcoming support really soon for Fortnite, PUBG, CSGO, Dota, Call of Duty, Battlefield V, and even Street Fighter VI. Uh, heads up, based on my testing on an ultra wide, lighting doesn't work well if you have black bars in a 21 by nine ultra wide ratio, just like this one here. But if you have a normal 16 by nine setup, you'll be fine. So in these games that I tested, we get the immediate live lighting feedback for that out of monitor immersion effect. But on top of that, and this is where it gets extra cool, there's this custom bespoke lighting effect depending on what happens in the game. 
In Apex, immediately in the lobby, there's a cool gradient glow effect which switches when the game is matched. Even skydiving in, there's this insanely immersive spot glowing that happens as if you're going through the clouds. And when you have it turned off, it's static as you can see here. Then finally, if you manage to win, there's a straight up light celebration that happens to really get the endorphins going. In League of Legends, the lights go haywire when you kill champions, let alone when you get multi-kills, and healing and ability effects are also replicated by the AI box too. There is a lot of fun bespoke lighting effects depending on what you do in these games, which I won't spoil here, and I'll leave you to have fun and discover them if you end up with this AI box. On the other hand, in currently unsupported games like Counter-Strike GO, the custom effects aren't there, so you're not going to get those dramatic effects on load screens and after wins, but it still works. What's being seen on screen is reflected in real time to the walls. It truly does improve the gaming experience. For example, when I throw a flashbang right at myself, the entire wall lights up pure white rather than just the screen. And when I throw a Molotov, the walls become fiery too. And notice here when I scope in, it goes dark until I scope back out. It's a load of fun in person. The other cool thing about this AI box is it's continuously being fed with data and it's learning, uh, so to speak, how to react to games so the list of supported games will grow in the future and I guess that's where the loose AI naming stems from. Watching Netflix, YouTube content or movies is also an absolute treat. The Avatar trailer in 4K ultra wide is stunning. It really shows off the lighting immersion we get from the lights and the instantaneous transition makes a world of a difference as you can see right here. Even a simple walk by video on YouTube looks amazing like this one here in Kyoto, Japan with the lights on. But a pro tip, it's worth honing the in-app settings to get the lights dialed into your liking, which is a pretty important part of when you're watching content. So to help you out, I find that the sensitivity option should be about 40%, which eases the color transitions in much nicer so it's less abrupt and distracting. But when gaming with the rapid color changes, 80 to 90% sensitivity seems to work well for me. When playing music too, the AI box identifies the genre of music being played in real time, which is pretty cool and matches the genre to what it feels to be appropriate lighting effects. The results aren't bad, but I think this come down to, you know, subjective taste. Okay, so here comes the interesting part, comparing the AI box to the Philips Hue box I've been using with a couple of Hue Play light bars for a while now. I have to say though, this setup is not cheap. It set me back over $600. Anyway, straight to the point though, the Govi AI box beats out the Philips Sync box in practically every aspect, including uh, very easily the price. The Philips play bars are nowhere near as bright as Govi's RGB IC lights, and this is the case with most of Govi's lights. They're overall just much brighter than Philips. Sync timing seems to be quite similar to the naked eye, with a slight edge I'd give to Govi's AI box, likely just thanks to the extra computing power under the hood and also the bespoke lighting effects. Also to note, uh, Govi provides not just two light bars, but also a full RGB IC light strip included, whereas these are separate purchases through Philips and they're not cheap through Philips. And then yeah, like I mentioned, there's the lack of bespoke lighting for games with the Philips Sync box, something that really does set the Govi AI box apart currently. With all that said, the Govi AI box isn't perfect though. The app's usability and design still needs to be worked on to catch up to Philips' refined app, but to be fair, the customization options on the Govi app do outshine Philips. The biggest pitfall with the AI box though is the lack of HDMI 2.1 pass-through or even display port connectivity, so we are capped at 4K 60Hz rather than 4K 120Hz. It is worth pointing out Govi's AI box supports 2K 144Hz and 1080p 240Hz, whereas the Hue Sync box maxes out at the slower 120Hz refresh rate at 1080p or 1440p. If Govi's AI box supported HDMI 2.1, it would have quite possibly put the final nail in the coffin on the considerably pricey Hue Sync box. 
The Govi AI Box is a brilliant single product addition to a gamer's space, especially if you're not tied to an ecosystem yet. Govi's ecosystem of affordable lights, great customization, and ever improving tech is a great choice currently. I'd still recommend the more affordable and visual T2 for a TV console gaming setup and stick with the AI box for PC gaming, especially since it'll get better with time as more games are supported and you just get those amazing bespoke effects on the PC. If you made it to the end of the video, comment the code word ColorFlow and I'll give it a like. I'll drop a video to my current desk and studio setup right here if you're interested. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, sub if you want more tech content and as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.